Hello, good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today we are talking about what is mostly agreed upon by the community to be the worst tier 9 battleship, and probably a very good candidate for the worst tier 9 ship overall, techline ship of course, and that is the tier 9 German techline battleship, the Frederick der Grosse, or the FDG, as I will be calling it from here on out. And yeah, this ship is not that great. However, like we've been doing for the past couple of weeks, we are going to take a look back at the ship, look at how the ship has evolved over time, and how she performs in today's wood warships. Now, the FDG has received several mm, not major buffs, not quite like the uh, Iowa that we looked at yesterday, but she has received quite a few nice buffs over the past couple of years, and that has certainly helped her out a lot. Now, we're going to go through her stats as is right now. And again, just like with yesterday's video, my commander is equipped. I do have Luchens on my FDG, of course, because it's, well, Luchens. He makes everything German so much better. So, of course, one of the highlights of the FDG and, well, the German battleships in general is their armor. And the FDG is no slouch here. She has a 60mm icebreaker bow that wraps around to 150mm cheek plate that goes to a 300 millimeter main belt with a 145 millimeter upper belt, a stern slant that does not quite wrap around the stern, but it is a 90 millimeter stern plate. Then its stern is 32. Uh, stern deck is 32, which leans into a 50 millimeter uh, aft deck. And then its main deck is 80 millimeters by the rear two turrets, and then 50 millimeters in the middle. Then by the four two turrets, it is 80 millimeters yet again. Then another 50 millimeter section before the main four deck, which again goes down to 32. So this is a really well armored battleship, and I'll throw some images of, of this up on screen for you guys to see. And this replay you're watching right now, it is a very, very, very good game in terms of showing you the strengths and the weaknesses of the FTG. Because at one point in the match, the FDG gets to be in its zone, which is obviously within secondary range of whatever it is that it's shooting at. At that range, its guns, its secondaries, its armor is at its best. And it is in the zone at that point. But when that is done, this thing is completely out of its element. Like, everything about the ship is terrible past about 14, 15 kilometers. Um... Especially its armor. Now it does have the German Turtleback Citadel. So this ship is really tough to Citadel at close range. Uh, at long range, just like with any German battleship, it is quite squishy because of its armor layout. It's very chunky. You will eat 20-30k salvos from ships like the Musashi, the Yami, anything with 18-inch guns at tier 10. Which there's a lot of 18-inch at tier 10, especially in the past year or so. So yeah, th this thing at range is miserable to play in. She has 84,300 hit points on the heavier side for tier 9 ships. Uh, her guns, you have two choices of guns. You can get some 406 millimeter main battery guns and if you run those you have a 26 second reload time and the shells do 12,700 damage per shell for AP and 4,800 uh, per shell for HE. Uh, the 420s give you a 29 second reload time. They do 13,500 maximum damage per AP shell and 5,000 maximum damage per HE shell. Uh, me personally, I run the 420s because in a brawling situation, you want the heavier hitting because, you know, you drive by the enemy ship. You tend to get one salvo at them and every point of damage counts at that, at that point. Plus two when the shells do connect at range, and you, you're normally connecting one or two shells at range, it does a little bit more damage. There's certainly an argument to be made that, you know, 26 second reload time is much better because you can throw more shells down range. Sure, it's personal preference. I run with the 420s. You can run with the 406s. It's completely up to you. It won't really help you out too much in the long run. Um, but anyway, so with the 420s, I also run a secondary build because this ship does have quite the secondary suite on it. You get 16 of the 105mm secondary guns, and then you get 12 of the 150s. And the 105s and 150s both have a maximum range of 12 kilometers. 
The 105s with a secondary build on them get, has a 2.3 second reload time. The 150s have a 5.1 second reload time. The 105s can pin 26 millimeters of armor, and the 150s can pin 38 millimeters of armor. Now, of course, this goes back to the build debate. You can run IFHE if you want your 105s to be able to pin that 32 millimeter threshold, which is the last major threshold in the game. And at tier 9, you're going to be seeing a lot of 32 millimeter ships, especially with battleships and such. But when you are top tier, 26 millimeters is enough to get you through just about every cruiser and destroyer you're going to see, you know, bar some of the super cruisers and some of the heavier cruisers. But sure, you can run IFHE if you want to. I don't really use HE too much in the FDG uh, unless it's a really just crappy situation where the enemy ship isn't wanting to turn and show me broadside or any side at all. Then yeah, uh, you like to use HE. And if you take IFHE, that's going to cut your 41% chance of starting a fire down on your 8 16-inch guns down to 20%, which uh, kind of sucks, but... I mean, hey, if you want your secondaries to be able to chew through that 32 millimeters of armor, you're going to have to do that. AA, not that great on the ship at all. Maneuverability, this is a pretty fast battleship at 31.5 knots. Not 32 knots, but 31.5 is plenty faster to your 9. She's a 940 meter turning circle radius, and her rudder shift time is 17.5 seconds. So not quite the uh, nippy ship here. Uh, with just the detection module and not the commander skill on, she does have a 15.1 kilometer detection range you can get that down a little bit further if you do take the detection commander skill but i do not for her consumables she has basic german battleship damage con basic german battleship repair party you can take spotter or fighter if you want to and you get hydro acoustic search it's that good old german hydro it goes out to six kilometers is active for 120 seconds and reloads at 114 seconds and you get three of those with superintendent on your ship okay so no i'm sorry you don't get three of those superintendent because superintendent's gone from the uh from the battleship commander um build tree you have to spill tree uh, skill tree you have to take emergency repair experts so you only get three now saddest of sad pandas still getting used to the new captain skills it's kind of weird it's been like a freaking year that they've been out and i'm still getting used to them but anyway so the FDG, what does that give the FDG in its corner? Well, it's very good at close range combat. Very, very, very good at close range combat. And they've buffed it in a few ways that help it out here a lot. So, the major changes that they did started around update um, 8.11. In 8.11, they changed all the German battleships' dispersion ellipse to that of the American and British battleships. Which means that... She now has much more consistent dispersion, and it's not that just absolutely dog crap German dispersion that you had beforehand. And I had to grind th through this thing way back before that uh, that buff. Back when I uh, grinded up to the, uh, to the GK, the GK was the second battleship that uh, tier 10 battleship that I grinded, and oh my god, stock a hole. FDG was one of the most painful experiences I had along with the with the original Ismo in this game. The guns were terrible. Bismarck was a lot of fun because it's Bismarck and it's a tier 8, but playing a tier 9 16 inch battleship that only has 8 guns. Oh, good lordy 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 lordy. The guns were not like you would miss from 6 kilometers with the dispersion of those old guns and it was just hot garbage and if you want to take the bigger guns you had a 32 second reload time thank god they buffed that to 29 seconds and still with eight 16 inch guns originally you had a 28 second reload time with 16 inch guns with just the 406s 28 seconds on an eight gun tier 9 battleship and again thank god they buffed that to 26 seconds as well so between the main battery reload buff and the dispersion ellipse changing, that was a, a, a much welcome change to the FDG. Now, most recently, 
they of course buff the accuracy and the range of the secondaries with the commander rework and the changes that they did to the German secondaries. So the secondaries can get out to 12 kilometers uh, with the flag and with a full secondary build and yeah they are quite good. It's essentially the Palmer, well not essentially, it is the Palmer and secondaries pretty much. So if you play the Palmer and you know what the secondaries are like. I mean the Palmer is literally just a uh, a 15 inch FDG. They're essentially the same, they're just configured slightly differently on the deck. So with those buffs that definitely helped out the FDG quite a lot. You have a much quicker reload time even on the bigger 420 millimeter guns. Your secondaries are out a bit further. They're a lot more accurate especially once you build up into the uh, full 45 second um, bonus with the secondary uh, mana fire for secondary skill. Once you have all that going for you, the secondaries are really, really, really good. And the 420mm guns, when they connect, they pack one heck of a punch. I mean, it is still German Battleship AP. Uh, German BB AP is very nice, very flat. Uh, shell arcs, they hit really, 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 really hard. It is still the smallest amount of guns at Tier 9, and it's ironically now on the smaller side of the Tier 9 um, gun chart used to be you know FDG had kind of the bigger guns at tier 9 obviously not the biggest but nowadays again with the influx of 457 millimeter guns it's you know back down there toward the bottom and I, I think that she still kind of needs a little bit of love in either the um, dispersion department or in the reload department I really think these 420s should have like a, a 27, 28 second reload time and the 406 is maybe like a 25 or a 24 second reload time because I mean you're still only got 8 guns at tier 9 and the guns still aren't that much more accurate. I mean it, you, you will see, you will see here toward the end how inaccurate these guns can be. Again it's a hell of a lot better than when it used to be but now it's still, whew, man you have to fight at a long range a lot more now with the higher tier meta um and again you'll see toward the end of the match here just how interesting these guns can be at longer range so with these buffs again in its own the fdg is a beast it it, it is great in its zone but unlike the GK, who can kind of keep up there toward the end of the match or the beginning of the match when their ship's at longer ranges, thanks to the GK's you know, 12 guns, um, the FDG really can't because the, the dispersion is still quite terrible at that range. And even if you're firing HE, it's not like you have amazing fire, uh, fire ch uh, starting chance on your HE shells. You don't. I mean, 41% is nice, but... At ranges past 16, 17 kilometers, you'll be landing one, two shells, maybe. Yeah, that's not really enough to really keep you up there in terms of the damage. So, she's a lot better than she used to be. And there's quite a bit of her out right now. Because, of course, with um, GK being removed in early 2022, it being replaced with the Prussia. Obviously, many players want to get their hands on the Prussia, the 18-inch German battleship. And I'm just really curious how they're going to do the Prussia from the FDG. Because if it's like the FDG in terms of gun performance, it's going to be pretty freaking aggravating with just 8 guns. Now granted, the Prussia does have 18-inch guns, so that probably will help it out a lot there. You know, big guns for its tier, while the FDG is sitting here with just 16-inch guns. And 420 for you uh, Americans out there, myself included, that's about 16 and a half inch guns. So they're definitely not, again, massive by tier 9 standards. Speaking of massive, though, I almost forgot to mention this with her armor. If you notice, she sits up pretty high out the waterline, which means you will eat a lot of chunks from just about any range. Unlike some of the other tier 9 and tier 10 battleships that sit really low on the waterline, FDG has an absolutely just massive side as you can see and if you really want to chunk it and the thing here too the armor is really great you can angle it at close to medium range and you'll bounce a lot of shells you'll see that happen in the in the video that's the, that's playing in the background that should have played in the background by now it's great for that 
but when you get caught up broadside, you're going to eat a lot of damage. It's not Citadel damage, so you know you can recover a good chunk of it, but still losing 30-40k a broadside to a random shot from a big gun battleship across the map that you weren't paying attention to does suck, which means you have to be really, 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 really aware of your surroundings. And you are helped out in that category by the Hydroacoustic Search Consumable that you have that helps you avoid eating a lot of torpedoes. It's, it's really painful seeing a German battleship eat just an absolute wall of torpedoes knowing that they had hydroacoustic search and they ate it because it wasn't running it's a, again a life-saving consumable that i really encourage you guys to use so you have got to have really good map awareness with the fdg you gotta know when you can push you gotta be very much aware of the surroundings and have good map awareness to get the ship to work but again when it does work it does work it's a lot better than it used to be it's a lot better at doing what it does but it really hasn't gotten better too too much in the areas where it was weak beforehand sure you can maybe land a shell or two at range but the crux of it is that it still is an eight gun 16 inch battleship at tier 9 with poor dispersion past 15 16 kilometers and that really hasn't changed too much about the fdg but hey look if you got to grind through this ship right now you're in a lot of luck like a lot of luck it's a again i cannot state this enough how much better it is today than it was back in the day. You know, it's still got its flaws, the massive broadside, the massive superstructure that eats pens for 15 freaking K from every single angle, the plenty of deck space to start a fire, but you got a lot better set of tools to do, to, to do damage with than what we had back in the day. Is it still the worst tier nine battleship? I still do agree with that, it, it, it is. The other tier nine battleships are a hell of a lot better, a hell of a lot more fun to play, and a hell of a, a lot less frustrating and it still probably is on the lower side of tier 9 ships altogether but it has its moments don't get too frustrated with it it has its moments but that's the fdg and my thoughts on it today and how she's aged over time let me know what you guys think about the fdg in the comments down below hope you guys enjoyed this video and hope you're having a wonderful thursday if you enjoyed the video make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel one way to 30,000 subs and i can't thank you guys enough for that hope you guys have a wonderful week Hope to catch you guys in the next one.